well, the numbers keep going up today. It's great. I have about 240 people in the in the uh, the webinar at the moment. So welcome to everybody that's just been joining us in the last hour. You've just heard Rob Colville from the Lazy Trader. Uh, my name's Simon Campbell from Around the Clock Trader, and uh, you're about to hear our third presentation of the day, David Paul from VectorVest. So let's take the microphone off and say good morning, David. Are you there? Yes, Simon. Good morning to you. Uh, can you hear me okay? I can hear you loud and clear, which which is great. Um, what we'll do, David, uh, thanks for joining us again. We'll go straight Perfect. over. We'll go straight over, if that's okay. Uh, share that's screens great. and then ask everybody in the room that they can hear and see you okay. So we're just going non-stop uh, today. Are you, are you keeping well? Which part of the country or the world are you in at the moment? Um, yeah, I'm at St. Paul's, at our office at St. Paul's this morning, uh, Simon. It's a lovely morning here in London. Uh, Great. Did you get stuck in the trains? No, the central line is still working, which is my yeah. method of locomotion this morning. Uh, uh, Piccadilly line is a disaster, but apart from that... Uh, Things once, you're, once you're in London, it's okay. It's the getting into London that seems to be the problem with these dreadful uh, train strikes. Um, However, I'm glad you're, you're you're okay. So we're looking at your screen now. If I can ask everybody that's here with us just to confirm using the checkbox. Uh, oh, Caroline, thank you. You knew what I was going to say. Didn't you? <laughs> Max, hello, welcome. Malcolm, Anthony, thank you very much. Okay, I think we're all uh, systems go. So David, I'll turn the uh, the roll over to you and uh, let you get started. Okay, Simon, thank you very much. Good morning, everyone. It's great to be here. Uh, and. Uh, uh, I'll uh, do my best to try and show you uh, over the next few minutes uh, how VectorVest uh, can show you how to become a more consistently winning trader. And I think that that uh, word consistent uh, will sort of weave through the presentation. Uh, it's, it's very easy to make some money in the markets, uh, uh, but to do it consistently, Mark Douglas says in his book, Trading in the Zone, is an art form. Uh, and uh, uh, that's what I'm going to try. I'm going to try and look at uh, uh, two types of trading. Uh, if I get time, one uh, is um, uh, momentum trading, using uh, trading with momentum and price and momentum on earnings, uh, and uh, then uh, have a look at our uh, long-term position trading model, which we call worry-free investing. Before I can start, uh, ladies and gentlemen, I have to put up the disclaimer. Uh, Vector-based is a, a authorized by the FCA. Uh, I, uh, I'm not allowed to give one-on-one -on -one financial um, advice uh, because I haven't sat down with you and done a very long and detailed fact find, the sort of thing that your financial advisor would have done with you over the years. So uh, I'm allowed to talk about uh, what I do myself and uh, certainly uh, during the presentation I'll be talking about the stocks that I'm in myself and I'm doing my best to walk the talk because I publish a, a blog every weekend. Simon sends some of it, most of it out uh, and I'm uh, do, doing my best to try and call the stocks uh, uh, as we move. So I, I have a fairly good run uh, in the last little David, while. A, we had a terrific response um, to your latest blog and the on the hidden diversions, uh, which is on the website. Um, Okay. Oh, well, that, diver, divergent signals are, are an area, one of my few areas of expertise, Simon. I've spent a very, very long time looking at those uh, divergence uh, systems. Uh, so um, uh, what we're going to look at, we're going to look at the VectorVest system very quickly indeed. I've been through that many, many times in this forum. We're going to talk about timing the London market, and there I'll talk about that reverse divergent signal, uh, which in fact uh, predicted this move uh, up in the market, in my view, uh, over the last day or so, uh, and that would seem to be going. Then we're going to talk about trading price and earnings momentum. Now, uh, for very, very many years, ladies and gentlemen, I was trading price momentum on its own. And since becoming involved with VectorVest over the last five or six years, I've been combining both price and earnings momentum. Uh, I'm trying to put these together, and believe it or not, I started to do that way back in the 1980s. Uh, and I started to do that based on uh, reading a book called How to Make Money in Stocks by William O'Neill. And I actually went to New York City and I met O'Neill and I got to know him quite well. And he's got a methodology called CanSlim, where he looks at exactly what I've said there, trading price and earnings momentum. 
unfortunately I wasn't able to keep it up because I'm a mechanical engineer and uh, I haven't got any formal financial training. I did my best to try and decipher the annual and the interim reports, but the darn things just got the better of me. They piled up in the corner of the office and I chucked them away and I started to trade technically alone. Uh, over the last five or six years uh, with VectorVest, uh, VectorVest automatically does the fundamentals as I'll show you in a moment and I managed uh, for once to be able to do what O'Neill was doing and to try and trade price and earnings momentum and what that's done for me is it's pushed up my uh, consistency enormously and I, I certainly have no problems uh, making the calls on the blog because if you make if you ever make public calls, you'll know that uh, if you get a few wrong in a row, that the comments can be fairly anal. So um, uh, when I put when I put them up in a public forum, I want to be fairly sure that they're going to go the right way. The last thing uh, that I'm going to try and talk about today, if I've got time, is worry-free investing. Okay, so. Um, the gist of VectorVest is that it winds together and weaves together the fundamental position of a company with the technical position of a company with the technical position of the overall market. Now, by fundamentals, my definition of fundamental analysis is it's a search for the true value of a share. Uh, my definition of technical analysis uh, is that it's a study of trends and turning points. So we're looking uh, at value of the share and uh, my dear old granddad told me a very, very, very long time ago that the only way to make money in anything was to find the value of something and then pay less for it. And he was talking about land uh, at the time. Uh, yeah, the uh, father of value investing, Benjamin Graham, has written a wonderful book, well, 50 years ago called, maybe more, uh, The Intelligent Investor. And um, he, in fact, spends, I think, eight chapters of the book showing you how to put a value on a share. And then the last two chapters is to, he tells you to do nothing until Mr. Market does something dumb so you can get the thing cheap. Uh, so largely he was saying the same thing. So uh, fundamentals all about value uh, and the technical position of the share and the technical position of the, sh of the overall market, study of trends and turning points in that trend. And that's what that reverse divergence that uh, Simon mentioned, it actually preceded a turning point in the trend. When all three things are in sync, then the future can be determined with a certainty that's unusual for this line of work. There's still probabilities involved. If you can be wrong, if you can be right 80% of the time, you're wrong 20% of the time. And on the next trade, ladies and gentlemen, you don't know whether it's one of the 80 or one of the 20. And getting your mind around that is what this business is all about. Okay, and thinking in probabilities has been the most difficult thing that I've ever had to get my mind around in my 61 years. Uh, now, if you move uh, to uh, intraday markets, getting 80% hit rate is just fantasy. Uh, I've never been able to get anywhere near it. Uh, 66 is more common. Uh, that means that uh, uh, you're wrong 33% of the time, and if you do the probabilities, you get runs and clusters of bad ones. And to get your mind around thinking and probabilities is quite something. Again, uh, uh, I read once a month of Mark Douglas's book, Trading in the Zone, would help. But even then, it takes a lot of hard work. So the three cornerstones of VectorVest, what's a share really worth? How safe are these earnings? And some idea about the trend. And uh, at VectorVest, we put numbers, cold hard numbers to these things. Uh, the very first is value. And uh, Bart Toledo, who put VectorVest together 26 years ago, so we're not a startup, 26 years ago, um, has put together a, uh, an algorithm which computes the valuation of every share on the market every single evening. So you can see, and we'll look at it in a second, you can see whether your share is overvalued or undervalued. And as a default, we favor undervalued shares. And in fact, uh, recently I found that my consistency goes up enormously when I only trade in shares that are trading 20% less than the vector best valuation. That's pushed my hit rate and my consistency up enormously. And on the blog that I do, that Simon publishes, uh, I only talk about shares that are trading, uh, I have a metric called value divided by price is greater than or equal to 1.2. We'll look at that in a second. A much more important measure of value is relative value. Now, as the slide says, relative value is a measure 
of the long-term price appreciation potential. Now, for long-term, read three years. And that is ranked against the risk-free rate, ladies and gentlemen, which is a treble A rated corporate bond. Okay, so if your share has got a relative value of 1.5, we believe that that share will outperform a treble A rated corporate bond by 50% over a window of three years into the future. And VectorVest reckons that anything above 1.3 is excellent. And as you'll see, uh, in momentum, momentum trading, I actually sort all of the shares on the London market by relative value. It drives the share price. Okay, so this valuation is a proprietary vector based number. That's the value of the share today. And relative value is a proprietary vector based number, which measures the upside potential over the next three years in relation to the risk-free rate. The next number is relative safety. And relative safety looks at the past. It looks at the balance sheet, the income statement, the cash flow statement, uh, all of those ghastly accounting ratios that I still struggle with. Uh, and it, in fact, sucks those all up and spits out one number, which, as the slide says, summarizes the consistency and the predictability of the financial performance. Mathematically massages these numbers between 0 and 2. Above 1 is not bad, above 1.3 is excellent. If you've got a company with a relative safety above 1.3, that's a company that's making money and making lots of money, and all those ghastly financial ratios are getting better. Okay, uh, so uh, relative safety, a very important number. And if you are a very conservative investor, then and you don't want surprises, and you only want to look at your investments once a month, then you would really want to push that relative safety up very high indeed, and as we'll see uh, in half an hour's time, relative safety is the cornerstone of our worry-free methodology. Because the higher the relative safety, the lower the probability of a surprise. Now, my son is a fund manager. He's a fund, I will see him uh, at the weekend. He's a fund manager in Johannesburg, and uh, he sits in front of a bank of six screens all day. He doesn't look at relative safety at all because he's managing risk proactively with stop loss orders and uh, he's looking for shares that are undervalued with a high RV uh, that are rising uh, and uh, he's using uh, and in fact has helped me develop uh, the momentum uh, trading strategies with both price and earnings. Uh, so relative safety, you really need to think about where you want to be on that. And you could quite easily have two portfolios. You could have a worry-free portfolio where relative safety is incredibly important, where most of your loot sits um, per chance. And then you could have a trading portfolio where you're looking at much smaller shares where relative safety is on the low side, but still there's a much higher probability of a high percentage move, assuming you can manage the risk. Relative timing measures the trend, uh, it measures the, uh, the short-term trend, day over day, week over week, month over month, uh, and it measures the direction and the magnitude of the trend, uh, mathematically massages it between 0 and 2, above 1, the share is rising, below 1, the share is falling, further above 1, the faster it's rising, and I think for you conventional technical analysts, it's closest to the MACD in its derivation. Uh, MACD, moving average, converging, diverging. Uh, uh, there is an axiom in investment education that the, the more complicated it sounds, the more you can sell it for. And I presume that Jerry Appel thought that moving average, converging, diverging was suitably complicated. So, um, uh, very useful indicator, however. Very useful indicator indeed. Simon, can you still hear me? I find this. I don't get any input. I'm 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 super yeah, I'm talking to myself, you know. We're, we're all here. Uh, we're, okay, we're good, man. good man. Good man. Could... We're we're all here. Mark Malcolm says everything's fine. Um, he's. If you could grunt momentarily, that would be wonderful. <laughs> okay. Well, I, I, will, I will grunt uh, on demand. Okay. Um, thank so, you. Uh, so, uh, uh, by the way, I just posted. Uh, um, the link to your um, blog article in the chat oh, box um, okay, while we've been speaking. So if anybody's interested to, to well, read that. Kind, Simon, yeah, that's good. Um, then what Bartolito did, um, uh, Bartolito's a chemical engineer, I'm a mechanical engineer, Bartolito's a chemical engineer, we've 
both get PhDs in, the, in our respective subjects. And uh, what he did 26 years ago was that he put together a relative value, uh, which is a measure of the upside potential, relative safety, which is a measure of the safety and the predictability of the earnings, both fundamental measures of the company together with RT, which is a measure of the trend, a technical measure, and he put those together into the one single number, VST. And this combines both fundamental analysis and technical analysis. Now, uh, m many of you will know the history of VectorVest. Uh, when I first uh, got involved with VectorVest, Simon, our host today, was in fact running VectorVest in the UK. And Simon, when I came to one of your seminars one Saturday afternoon, and I saw that somebody had in fact put together fundamental analysis together with technical analysis into the one single number, I nearly fell off the stool. Uh, I just didn't think it could be done, and that's how I got involved with VectorVest in the first place. Uh, uh, I remember I it well, a rainy yeah. afternoon in South Kensington. <laughs> That's correct, sir. That is correct. Well, uh, uh, after that, uh, I, ladies and gentlemen, I got the um, agency for VectorVest in South Africa. I built it up. I built it up for my son. My son got so interested in markets and he did quite well in a and a, and a small account which I financed, that he managed to get himself a job uh, as a fund manager, and he's now managing 20 million pounds worth of uh, of assets. He's only 25, uh, and he's using uh, my momentum trading, momentum trading both in uh, price and in earnings methodology, uh, which means uh, that uh, Simon wanted to. Um, Developed this business that uh, he's running at the moment, and uh, Vectorvest asked me would I like to run Vectorvest UK in his absence, uh, and uh, I've been doing that for the last couple of years. So that's why I'm here. Uh, as a, as a default, uh, ladies and gentlemen, all of the shares on the London market are in fact sorted by descending VST. Uh, we calculate a stop loss for every share in the market every single day. It's quite a sexy stop loss in that it's adjusted for both the volatility of the share and for the fundamentals. If the fundamentals are good, we widen the stop loss. We give the share an awful lot more wiggle room. If the fundamentals are drawing in, in other words, the RV is moving down, the RS is moving down, then we tighten the stop loss. Uh, and uh, uh, we put a buy, sell, or hold recommendation to every share in the market every single day. Now, the buy, sell, and hold are largely trend following signals. The only fundamental input is for a buy, the VST must be greater than one. The rest of them are in fact trend things and these are all trend things. So you can time the market with the buy, sell and hold uh, signals. In other words, you can use the buy to get in, but its biggest use, ladies and gentlemen, is to quantify the breadth of the advance. And every day we calculate the number of shares on a buy divided by the number of shares on a sell to actually quantify the breadth of this advance. And as we'll see in a second, the buy-sell uh, metric is incredibly useful to work out when markets are being far, far too optimistic and far, far, far too pessimistic. And I'll talk about some wonderful contrarian signals uh, in a second with the buy-sell ratio. So an incredibly sophisticated tool. And as a technician, those of you that are technicians, I don't think that you can actually do too much on market breadth. I really can't. There's a wonderful guy out there called Richard Arms who's written about a dozen books on market breadth. Uh, so uh, and I want to go to the program itself and have a look at the program itself. And there we are. That's the VectorVest program. Uh, the little traffic light uh, defines the short-term trend or the primary wave of the market in VectorVest speak. And we're in the green, which is good. And um, uh, VectorVest advocates buying safe, undervalued stocks that are rising in price at this time. And I'll explain this screen in a second. Now, if I click on viewers, uh, and first time you go into this, ladies and gentlemen, that's going to be empty. So you're going to have to populate this with uh, either the stocks or industries or sectors, uh, but I've just clicked, I've been in this a dozen times this morning, I've just clicked on Stock Viewer. Uh, and uh, we've got uh, a little company called Sophio, and I'm a shareholder in this. Uh, it may not be suitable for you, but I'm a shareholder in this. Uh, and uh, uh, it's, there's the code. Okay, it's listed on AIM. I've been talking about it on my blog for the last six weeks or so, so uh, I, I, I've been as transparent as I can be. Uh, 
it's trading at three pounds forty one. Now the first proprietary number is our valuation, and we believe the share is worth five pounds sixty eight. So we can see uh, by eyeballing that the darn thing is undervalued. And uh, as my dear grandfather and Benjamin Graham said, the only way to make money in anything is to find the value of something and then pay less for it. Whether you're on property, whether you're in used cars, whether you're in used caravans, whether you're in agricultural land like my granddad, uh, that is a cornerstone of trying to make some money. So um, it was up 13 pence yesterday, which is clearly not a proprietary number, but uh, going the right way, 4% on the day. So value is a proprietary number. Now relative value is 1.61 on this share. Now that relative value is a measure of the upside against the risk-free rate over a window of three years into the future. At 1.61, above 1.3 is excellent, uh, and I have my own rating above 1.5. It's called bloody marvelous. So that is an incredibly strong number. Uh, however, it does fall down in relative safety. The relative safety is a small company, as we'll see in a second, it doesn't pay a dividend, and a dividend analysis is a big part of relative safety, uh, and our belief is, and most quants believe the same thing, that if a company uh, pays even a small dividend and it's got a history of growing that dividend safely, then it's a much safer financial instrument. So Sophian does not yet uh, pay a dividend. It's got a, a relative safety that's just around one. Uh, uh, so if you were, uh, certainly it wouldn't be a part of a worry-free investment. Okay. Uh, so it's, it's something where risk needs to be managed and quantified. Uh, RT is 1.71 on a scale between 0 and 2. That means it's going up the page uh, pretty much vertically. And if we put those three things together, RV, RS, and RT, and for those of you that are engineers or mathematically, it's just by the sum of the squares. Uh, and that uh, has got the highest VST in the pack at 1.47. It's on the buy recommendation, and the stop loss is three pounds. We believe it's going to grow earnings at 39% next year, and these numbers are all our best shot, ladies and gentlemen, going forward. And uh, that's our best shot at it, so if you look in the Financial Times, those numbers will be completely different because that's their, that's, those are historical. This is our best shot going forward, and uh, it is our best shot because Mark Twain so beautifully said that the future is a very slippery commodity. Uh, and if we go cross to the right hand side we can see dividends and uh, then some details uh, high low volumes uh, sales uh, and um, uh, market cap and as you can see market cap is 25 million so we're dealing with a small uh, little company here uh, and uh, it's 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 a company that I've been a shareholder in now for a little while uh, a month or so uh, I'm going to pull up the chart uh, there we go, uh, and the, the, I've got the chart in my standard format. I'm just going to make the value a little bit heavier so you can see it. There we go. All right, so uh, down below we've got earnings per share. I put earnings per share up again because Benjamin Graham, who's Warren Buffett's mentor, and that sort of gives him a fair amount of clout, uh, uh, said that any earnings per share growth is the engine that drives the share price. Uh, and as you can see, earnings per share shot up from a loss-making situation to a profitable situation very quickly, from nothing to 20 pence a share. As a result, the share price moved up the page uh, and moved up the page very strongly indeed. Vectorvest revalued the share, and as we can see at the moment, there's our valuation and there is the uh, share price. Now, I always like to see a nice consolidation. So we've had a run up the page, and then the market moves into this consolidation. Uh, and uh, technical analysts would refer to that, I think, as a pennant. Uh, uh, and maybe I should have drawn it to here. Inside this, uh, we've got one, two, three, five waves, not very pretty. I realize that, but I've drawn this uh, down-sloping trend line, and I felt that when it got through the, this area, as you can see, there's our buy. We clipped our stop loss here, 
I wasn't in it then. I got back into it as it started to break up the page here. And I think that uh, with any luck at all, we're going to see it's got to get through these old highs. Uh, we're going to get up to five pounds here relatively quickly. And uh, so what at VectorBase and what I'm doing in terms of the momentum trades is that I'm trying to put together some very simple technical analysis in shares that are significantly undervalued, that are growing their earnings strongly, and I want to be getting into them when the general market is rising, and that's uh, my next uh, little exercise that we're going to talk about now before I run out of time. So it's a very simple exercise. Now I've found, ladies and gentlemen, that if you get a consolidation, and within the consolidation, earnings per share is rising, that it breaks, that it breaks very strongly. So I'm not using uh, complicated technical analysis, although I've studied GAN and I've studied Elliott and whatever, I'm not using any of that. I'm using uh, a market that rises, moves into a continuation pattern, and then breaks again. Now, those of you that know your onions will know that this, this, ugh. oh, I'm a bit thick here. Sorry, guys. Wrong line freehand, that this distance should be repeated. So for once, the technical target, which is up around five from this flagpole, and the fundamental target are pretty much saying the one thing. The only problem, ladies and gentlemen, is that the relative safety is 0 0.98, which is not bad, nevertheless, it's a small company, a small mark cap, and uh, there could be a problem. So that's why I've, uh, uh, in the blog, I've talked about that being a, a trade for those people that can manage risk proactively, and uh, you could, uh, our stop loss on this trade as it broke is down here somewhere, so the stop loss would already be uh, around my entry. Okay. Uh, clearly in small shares you've got the spread to worry about as well, uh, so uh, not quite as easy as, as trading a, a FTSE 350 company. But uh, if you're prepared to look at these shares, you can frequently get moves from three to five pounds that happen very quickly indeed, uh, and you just have to do a little bit of inward searching to make sure that you've got the emotional response to measure the risk. Uh, I think that you need two things in markets to be successful. One, you need quality information, and two, uh, you need self-awareness. You really need self-awareness. I do an awful lot of trading, intraday trading, uh, when I've got time, and uh, I think that the thing that I bring to my intraday trading, mostly of the FTSE these days, uh, is that I've been at it for so long that I, I'm aware of when I don't feel up to it, and uh, if those of you that do trade intraday will know that you've got to be at the top of your game to take money out of the market intraday. And I always think that it I played senior rugby. I remember running out into Ellis Park in Johannesburg one afternoon, and there was 95,000 people in the crowd. Uh, and uh, you've got to be feeling just like that uh, as you go out uh, to take on the markets intraday. At least that's what I find. So, uh, information, uh, you need information if you're some, <laughs> I went on a course uh, very early on in my career in, um, in uh, Chicago, it was run by George Lane, uh, who invented the stochastic indicator, and uh, got to know him very well, and old George Lane used to say that if you're trading pork bellies, you need to know what's going on down the piggery. <laughs> so you need a source of quality information, and you need self-awareness in whatever uh, time frame uh, you're trading in. Clearly, uh, uh, as the time frame gets smaller, I heard Rob saying that he didn't want to trade uh, anything below uh, a daily chart, and I think that's wise. As you start to get there, my, my, my best friend and trading partner, Tom Hogarth, trades a two-minute chart of the DEX. I, I haven't got the self-awareness for that, uh, The uh, your present moment where you have to be uh, is just too short. So I, I leave that in his very capable hands. That's the sort of share that we're after from this type uh, of uh, momentum trading. Any questions on that, Simon? I haven't had a grunt for a while. Any? Uh, <laughs> is that a grunt to you now? <laughs> uh, Paul, is, it's not a question really, but Paul says, um, 
just to wish you a Merry Christmas. He's from the Oxford user group. I know you run these oh, okay. groups around the country. <laughs> he yeah, says he's well, still uh-huh. he's still using and uh, it's the, he's still smiling. Uh, so Vectorvest is working for him, uh, which is uh-huh. great. Well, we have user groups around the country, Simon, and they're a source of great satisfaction to me. I was down in Bristol last night, uh, and uh, uh, a great evening in Bristol, and, and pretty much everybody's making money. Uh, we had a great evening in Manchester last week where everybody's making money. And uh, uh, the point is, you really don't, if you do something, su- some simple stuff with VectorVest. Now, there, when I see. If you ever see a double bottom, uh, guys, there's this uh, thing out there in technical analysis that double bottoms happen at bottoms and markets. Invariably, they don't. The best double bottoms happen uh, after an initial thrust. And this, when I see something like this, when I see a market coming down and making a double bottom after a thrust up the page, then invariably you get a, a nice move up the page. Richard Wyckoff would have called this a spring, where it came down and ran those lows. Market thrusts up the page, comes down, can't break that high, and then comes down, takes out these stops again, and then moves up the page. Wyckoff would have called that a spring. He had two setups. A guy called Richard Wyckoff, he had a spring, which was a bullish setup, and what he called an up thrust, which is the mirror image of that, uh, on down. Uh, and uh, if you come to some of my free vector air seminars, uh, you'll get all of this stuff. Uh, at no cost. So let me go back to my PowerPoint presentation because I get carried away, as you know, Simon. Uh, so uh, uh, market timing. So ladies and gentlemen, we want to find a share that's undervalued. Uh, and uh, you mentioned the user groups. Uh, in uh, Bristol, we have a very experienced investor called Keith, and uh, he's emphasized to me uh, over the years now uh, that it's just so important for your consistency to be trading in shares like Sophion that are trading well below the vector vest valuation and that's helped me enormously it really has uh, you miss the old one like fever tree that's trading well above the vector vest valuation but our objective is to find shares that are undervalued that are growing their earnings aggressively which is relative value as safely as you need relative safety. Some people will ignore relative safety and some people uh, don't want surprises and they will push that relative safety up high and many people will have two portfolios where they uh, put uh, quite a big percentage of their cash into a safe portfolio and maybe uh, trade aggressively with 15-20% of it depending on your age. Uh, So uh, we want to buy shares when the general market is rising. Now Vector has to put together uh, five, in fact, market timing systems that run from short-term timing systems that are suitable for spread betters over two to five days, right through to the longer-term methods that are used and are worry-free. Uh, and again, I haven't got time to go into those uh, this morning. I do those in detail at our, at our seminars. The next one is on the 17th of January. Uh, so to time the market, we look at a index called the vector vest composite. Now the vector vest composite is not the FTSE 100, it's not the FTSE 250, 350 or whatever, it's all of the shares that we follow on the London market and on AIM, some 2,200 shares and ladies and gentlemen they are equally weighted. We look at the price of the vector vest composite, we look at the breadth the number of shares on a buy recommendation divided by the number of shares on a sell recommendation and we look at the momentum or the RT of the vector based composite and we weave those three things together to produce buying and selling signals. So the gist of it is that the short term systems are based on a five day rate of change of price, momentum and breadth and the longer term systems are measured around a 21 day rate of change of price, momentum and breadth. Not quite as simple as that but that's the gist of it. So, to minimize chart watching for those people that are busy, uh, we've summarized the trends into two words. Now, at the moment, the trend on the London stock market is up and up. What does that mean? The first word refers to the short-term trend, the primary wave, and the second word refers to the long-term trend. Now, VectorVest is on your phone, and if you're running around the world like me, all you've got to do is to uh, click on the app and... uh, the charts uh, and the front page of VectorVest comes up on your phone and I can see that all is good 
we're in an up up situation now. And this is reported every single day in the in this format. The longer term trend is up, the second word, the uh, short term trend is up, the first word. So if you don't like looking at charts, this is summarized for you. So that's the front page, that's where we were a second ago. And this little traffic light summarizes uh, the short term trend and it, it it's fairly volatile, it moves back and forward over two to five day uh, cycles. I won't get into cycle theory here but there is uh, marked cycles and markets that come up over and over and over again. Uh, that 26 week cycle, I call it the investor cycle, right down uh, to uh, short term cycles, intraday cycles in the marketplace. Uh, this was the wrong place for that. That's a two day seminar on its own. Uh, so uh, uh, this measures the short term trend and as you can see or maybe you can't see that the first word is up and that first word has been up now for the last one, two, three, four, five trading days. We've been in an up up situation for the last trading days and as you can see we've got green here. Now the green just means that the price is up day over day and week over week and uh, this uh, box of tricks here is called the color guard and it measures price tabulates the price of the composite, it tabulates the RT of the comp composite, and it tabulates the buy-sell ratio. And when either of those is up day over day or week over week, it's in fact color-coded green. If the market were falling and they were down day over day and week over week, it would be color-coded red. So at the minute, the short-term trend is up. And if we go to the next sketch, we can have a look at the VectorVest composite itself. So the candle chart is the VectorVest composite, it's an equally weighted index of all 2,200 shares that we follow. Now down below we have got the market timing indicator. Now the market timing indicator is the only part of VectorVest that's not in the public domain. The rest, uh, Dr. Leder's got a little book called Stock Strategies and Common Sense where the valuation algorithm, the relative safety algorithm are all talked about. Uh, he doesn't want to talk about the market timing indicator because he feels it's proprietary and he doesn't want anybody to copy it. Uh, it's a composite indicator which looks at both the a rate of change of the price and a rate of change of the breadth of the market all rolled into one and like everything else in VectorVest mathematically massaged between zero and two. And ladies and gentlemen, when the MTI comes up through one and the price has traded up for two weeks in a row, we get what's called a confirmed call. And here's the confirmed calls for this year. Now the confirmed call is the opposite of the primary wave. It's the longest term trading system that we have. In between the two of them, there are three others that I haven't got time to talk about today that are for uh, people who want to be in the market, let's say, for a few weeks to a few months. Uh, it's called a DEW, uh, uh, but I won't get there today. As you can see, as the MTI came up through one and the price has been up for two weeks in a row, in other words, it's closed above its open for two weeks in a row, uh, then uh, we get a little green triangle on the chart. And during the course of this year, we got a red triangle on the chart on the second trading day and that sold us off into the middle of uh, February. And this is all about Yellen putting rates up three, year, three times in 2016, which didn't happen. The market voted very, very strongly with its wallet after they come back from the uh, Christmas holidays that they didn't like that. Uh, and uh, she backed away from that. Uh, and then during the course of the year, there's the Brexit the the referendum. Uh, and interestingly, in the referendum, the long term trend of the market didn't change. And it actually only turned down at the start of November. So during the course of the year, based on this long term system, we've had three signals. And that signal, ladies and gentlemen, is currently still short. It hasn't turned up as yet. So we're in an up up situation, but the longer term trend has not as yet been confirmed by price action. So this is a very long term uh, trading system. So if you were trading our worry free, you still would not be taking new positions. Very slow to react and um, filters out an awful lot of market noise. Uh, 
Uh, now, there are some very interesting aspects of the market timing indicator because when the market timing indicator gets down to about 0 0.6, invariably that's a good time to be buying stocks and we've got some cracking divergence on this as well, for those of you that know what it is. We've got the price rising and the MTI falling and it's now down around about 0 0.6. Invariably that's a great place to get involved and then when you see a buy signal which is preceded by a massive oversold situation and divergence, invariably get a move. Now, those of you that are eagle-eyed will see the bare image, mirror image of this where the price was rising but the indicator was falling and then we get a sell signal. Invariably that precedes a move down the page. Okay, so uh, those of you that understand divergences, when the MTI gets up to about 1.6 that's invariably a top. Here we dragged on a little bit further, but that's when the MTI gets up to about 1.6, you need to start to be careful, folks. Uh, so uh, some very potent overbought, oversold conditions within the MTI itself, and I've just talked about this for a second. Now, the next thing is the buy-sell ratio, and over the years we've noted that if you get a MTI down around the 0.6 as it was in February and the buy-sell ratio gets down to about 0.2. In other words, there's five times more shares on a sell recommendation than on a buy recommendation that you've isolated a major extreme in the market and invariably it goes the other way. And This happened here again on the upside. The MTI went up to about 1.6 and the buy-sell ratio went the whole way to five on the upside and that was a similar overbought situation. Dragged on a little bit further but finally uh, it uh, came back uh, and as you can see the price is rising here, the indicator is falling. Uh, at the moment the uh, situation looking quite good. The reverse divergence that I talked about uh, in, in that thing I did for Simon is that here the price is rising but the indicator was falling and that's called reverse divergence and that's what I, I was fairly positive about markets. There's also a very important support line just there. Uh, so I was very positive in markets based on that thing. If you do trade with indicators, ladies and gentlemen, whatever that indicator is, stochastics, MACDs or whatever, the only leading property that they have is divergence and there's two types, normal divergence which pr predicts a reversal and reverse divergence which predicts a continuation uh, pattern. Believe it or not, uh, the people that designed the oscillators, uh, Lane, uh, Wilder, um, etc. They didn't understand divergence at all. Divergence was in fact talked about first by a character called Andrew Cardwell, uh, who was an analyst at JP Morgan. It was uh, Cardwell who in fact, who, uh, and who actually, the divergences were always there. He was the guy who noticed them. So uh, some very, very powerful overbought, oversold situations. So, so momentum trading, and uh, I'm discard, that always gives me a little heart attack. Uh, I can now find these things and to do that and this is how I've been finding them on the blog to get a, a, a list of shares and, and I uh, let's just do a new search, a brand new search, no, a brand new search, no. What, what I can do very easily is that I can write a search to try and find these. So time of search and that just defaults to whatever I put in the box which is uh, yesterday's date. And the first thing that I want to do is that I want to go to price and I want to find a high and notice I'm asking the price is making a new high and let's start on a weekly over 26 weeks. So the price makes a new weekly high over 26 weeks. The thing uh, that uh, I put in next I have to go down here until I find value divided by price in vector vest fields. We've written pretty much everything you would ever need to write a search. Divided is equal to 1.2 and uh, that means that uh, the share price, I want the value, the vector vest valuation to be 20% above the price. OK. 
Okay, and I can look at time of search, and uh, let's uh, well, let's just look at the whole market. Now, I want my own definitions. I'm going to sort this by RV because uh, I feel that RV drives the share price. RV, where did I go? Must be here. There we go. Relative value. Okay. Uh, well, let's. And just run that search. Now, what, I, what I'm find, what I'm looking for, is that I'm, ma I'm looking for a share that's making a 26-week high, that's undervalued, and I'm sorting it by relative value. And I run that search, and here's what I find: Sophie on Victoria, Numis, John Lang, Melrose Industries. Ah, I called this one in the blog the other day based on this. So let's just have a look. At these, and I hope this is not going to cost. Now, if you do this, ladies and gentlemen, you get a list of high probability uh, trades every single day. Okay, and then you need to go into them uh, and uh, and have a look to see which ones make sense to you. And uh, we will be buying these if you're a short-term trader, if you're a momentum trader, when we're in an up-up situation, and when the little pointer on the front page of VectorVest says, VectorVest says that you should be buying shares today. If it says VectorVest believes that you should not be buying shares today, then you sit on your hands. Sentiment is 70% of the exercise. Uh, if you're a short-term trader over, over two to five days, you only need to look at the short-term trend, the primary wave. If you're more conservative, then you would want the primary wave to be up and the longer-term trend to be up. That's a better technical situation. Uh, so let me go down uh, to, I called one savings bank as well. Let's just look at uh, three of, four of these to start with. Because sometimes when I pull in a big, big file of charts, it can cause the sound quality to go down. Simon, are you still there, sir? Uh, David, yeah, we're still yeah, here. Okay, we've all right. Got a, so got a we, seven or eight well, we've got an undervalued share, okay, and that's where we've been before, and that came out of this search as it broke up through these levels just here, okay, and uh, that's where I got that from. It's on the blog. Uh, I'm not making it up. Uh, and uh, it's there. It, 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 it's suitable. For, it's, uh, I'm holding it. It may not be suitable for you because the relative safety is low. So let's look at the next one. Okay, this is Victoria. Now, Victoria uh, is the biggest manufacturer of uh, carpets in the UK. Uh, and uh, there's the situation, and we've got this big broadening pattern that's been in place here. There's the valuation. There's the earnings per share moving up the page. There was a five for one here not so long ago. Uh, and uh, it's on a buy recommendation. Uh, and uh, that pattern would seem to be spent if it gets much, much higher. See, it triggered that as the weekly, uh, as it stuck its nose above that high. So that's something to look at uh, for sure. Uh, looks fine to me. I'm not, I'm not a shareholder, however. Uh, Numis. Now, Numis would seem to uh, be on the move, folks. Numis, a small broker, all small cap brokers have had a, a torrid time recently. If my friend William O'Neill was here, he would say that this was, in fact, a cup and a handle. What do you think, technicians? Any technicians like to comment on that? Uh, we've got this level here, and it's come back to kiss that level. Let's put our stop. Our stop is there at... Uh, so uh, that, if you see that breaking up, Numus looks good. I'm not in the share myself. I see this left, this head, this right shoulders. First target would be this distance repeated. Uh, and uh, this uh, little search, which is only one of the dozens of searches on VectorVest, but this little search uh, finds winner after winner. Okay. Uh, uh, and it finds them easily uh, uh, without a great deal of fuss. And this is what uh, I'm doing now. I'm looking for momentum trades. It's breaking a new high. And earnings momentum. I'm looking for price momentum and earnings momentum in shares that are undervalued. And uh, if you simply do this, my word, you get very lucky. Now, if that damn thing doesn't break up the page, I am going to eat every technical analysis book I've got. Uh, this is John Lang, uh, the John Lang Group. Uh, 
they've got fingers in many, many, many pies. I think it's a great little company, big company, should I say. It's 800 million market cap, I think. Uh, uh, Victorvest revalued the share here, uh, and earnings up, as you can see, uh, from 20 uh, pence to 40 pence, so double earnings in the last six, seven months. Uh, as a result, our valuation's gone up through the roof. It's now trading in a uh, ascending triangle. Needs to get up through that. It just went into a buy recommendation the other day. And uh, do I know what's going to happen next? Of course I don't, but I would place that at least 70-30 at least 70-30. That means that uh, the, in the next trade, I'm not sure whether it's one of the 70 or one of the 30, but nevertheless, the probabilities are in my favor. And again, this distance should repeat. Okay, and I get these every day. Okay, and that's, I've been called, I called, John Lang was on the blog, I'm not sure it was last weekend or the weekend before for people to watch. And that's what I mean by having a look at a combining price momentum and earnings momentum. Uh, and that type of uh, logic has uh, trebled my holding in um, uh, uh, JD Sports, for example. Oh, a very, very bad report in JD Sports overnight. I don't know if you've seen that. I don't know if it's affected the share price this morning or not. Uh, let's have a look at a couple more of these. Melrose uh, and uh, Sport Tech. I don't know Sport Tech. We looked at it last night in Bristol, uh, uh, and we graph those, chart those. Should I say? Is Melrose uh, 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 and uh, its machinery uh, and whatever? I always get confused because in South Africa, Melrose makes cheese. <laughs> always get and a very tasty bit of cheese it makes as well. So broken through here, undervalued earnings per share rising looks fine to me. Uh, uh, there's a cathet energy. This is one I called on the blog. Uh, moving up the page, uh, and uh, with any luck, it's on its way to about 120. Okay. Uh, and this is a steel company, uh, also a little bit undervalued, moving up the page. So uh, one that did come out. Now remember, if a share makes a new high and then pulls back a little bit, it won't be in your search that day. But one uh, share that uh, came out of this search. Uh, the other day was 3i, 3i infrastructure, and uh, no, it's not 3i infrastructure. Three. Uh, I'm not quite sure. I've gotten confused. Okay, that's definitely not this one because that's overvalued. Uh, but uh, it, it looked really, 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 really good. So let let me move on a little bit now. Uh, and that's what we're after. Uh, this share and Sophia moving up the page. Uh, Simon, any questions on momentum trading with both um, earnings and price momentum of price. most people are trading purely on price momentum uh, the vector vest methodology or at least the one that I'm presenting today uh, says that uh, we should be looking for both price momentum and earnings momentum and this is essentially the journey that Nicholas Darvas made in how I made two million dollars in the stock market. I don't know if anybody's read that book, but he started trading fundamentally and he lost a heap of money. Uh, this is a character who was trading in the 1950s. And then he started to trade technically and he lost a heap of money. The breakouts just didn't work. And then he finally put both together where he would trade with a mixture of both technical analysis and fundamental analysis, and uh, that's how he made us $2 million. Uh, uh, and that influenced William O'Neill, and I, I know William O'Neill reasonably well, and uh, that influenced William O'Neill, and that's how he put together his CanSlim methodology. And uh, what I'm trying to do with this simple little search uh, on VectorVest is to try and uh, replicate that work easily without a great deal of fuss. Now, I could quite easily use in the uh, uni search, for example, I could quite easily use a much, I could use 13 weeks, which give me a, a much finer signal, or I could use a few days, okay, 10 day high or 20 day high as the turtles did, and that would give me a faster signal. Okay, uh, one savings bank, a share that I did uh, call on the blog a little while ago, uh, 
And that's one savings bank. I called it uh, just there. It broke at three pounds, scared me a wee bit here, and it's now moving up the page again. Uh, the uh, earnings uh, up marginally, or it's trading below our valuation, and it broke up through uh, this uh, uh, trend line trend line up the page, it broke through that, and now pushing up the page quite nicely. I called that at three pounds. Okay. Uh, and it it did what it normally does. When a market breaks a level, it comes back and kisses the level. The institutional traders would rather die than chase the market. So invariably, they will bid it here, and it only takes a few people to check it out before the market comes back to the bids. So what I'm advocating this morning, Simon, is a a relatively simple-minded but very powerful approach which looks at how to find some strong uh, trends, um, you know, momentum-based trends in price, and how to actually couple that together uh, with momentum in earnings. And we want to be buying into the shares if we are relatively short-term traders when uh, the front page of VectorVest says this. So as VectorVest advocates buying safe undervalued stocks that are rising in price at this time, and we see lots and lots of green on the color guard, and I haven't got a great deal of time uh, to go into that uh, in any more length. We have uh, five trading systems, folks, uh, uh, to time the market. Uh, the two that I've talked about today are uh, the primary wave and uh, the underlying trend. At the moment, we're in an up-up situation, and the pointer's in the green, uh, and uh, the game is on. Simon, uh, I'm, I'm going to finish there. I haven't got time to, to go to the worry-free today. I've done it twice in the past. I think that the shorter-term momentum trades in both price and in earnings are probably more suitable for your group of traders anyway. Uh, anybody that wants to try and uh, try it for themselves, uh, well, I'm more than happy uh, to give you a, a five-week trial of VectorVest for £5.95. Uh, after that, it's £44 a month, uh, and it's on a month-to-month -month basis. And my promise to you is that if I can't make you money, you can stop it at any time. We're fully FCA, FCA authorized. If you want to go ahead after five weeks, you just give us a shout. Uh, if you take it for another month and you feel it's not for you, then you just give us a shout, and we shall remain friends. And that's the code, vectorvest.co.uk forward slash RTC. Simon, are you there, sir? Simon? Simon, are you there? 